Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome back to another episode of Wherever You're At. For those of you who are new here, my name is Mihad and I'm your host on a show where we talk about self-improvement through Islam and just generally girl talk. But before I get into today's episode, I owe you guys a huge apology because I'm literally, I'm a liar. Uh, I lied to you guys. I said I would try to post more in Ramadan and I didn't do that. I literally posted two episodes and dipped, but I have my reasonings, Okay. So basically, I kind of had like a big idea for a podcast and I went through with it and I recorded it and it's great. And I even recorded a video version of it because I know a lot of you guys like YouTube. But the process of like editing that has been so taxing and overwhelming that I put it off. Not even put it off. I swear I tried to find time during the day to edit like 10 minutes here and there, but It just seems like it's never ending and that has kind of stopped me from even recording a new episode because I just felt like I had to finish that one before starting something else. But now I'm putting it on pause and I am just going to record episodes here and there whenever I feel like there's something to talk about because I'm wasting time and Ramadan is almost over and I feel bad because I did promise you guys a music alternative and podcast and all that stuff. So I'm getting into it. Today might be a short episode, might be a long one. I don't know, guys. I am strictly going with the flow, and that is not what I do. But I'm putting that aside because I preach, 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 preach that perfectionism is going to stop you from achieving your goals, and it literally stopped me from achieving mine. So it's ironic, but this podcast is, number one, a reminder for me before it's a reminder for anyone else. So stepping out of the perfectionism loop and recording a podcast today for you guys because we are already done with one week of Ramadan, one week and a few days actually, which is one third of Ramadan, which is actually crazy. The last episode, we talked about our goals and our excitement and now we're like in it, like we're in the gut of it. And I want to know how you guys are feeling. So under this episode, I'm going to leave a question about how you guys are feeling about Ramadan. I want to know Because like I said, I don't want this podcast to be just me talking to myself because I do that enough as it is. I want this to be like interactive and a way for us to connect. And I cannot connect if I'm talking to myself, okay? (sighs) So my life recently, which I want to share with you guys because I feel like I don't want to just be another lecture or another like halaqa, you know what I mean? Like I want to make sure that you are also gaining that deeper connection and and that way we can open doors to the combos I actually want to have like the deep ones um so let me recap my first 10 days of Ramadan like I said in the last episode I was nervous because I'm far away from my comfort masjid like my childhood masjid and so I was nervous about that but alhamdulillah I've been going there a lot like frequently like multiple times a week and I really enjoy it I really like being there they're doing like renovations and stuff so it's cute to see but It's crazy how I don't recognize anyone at the masjid anymore because like, you know, new generations are coming, old ones are moving out. It's like a whole new community, but I like it. It it makes me feel like the masjid is still alive. Um, In terms of balancing school and work and Ramadan, I would not give myself an A+. I just, and I don't blame myself. Like I am exhausted 25-7. Like more, I'm more than all the time exhausted, Okay. Yesterday, I recorded a day in my life Ramadan edition, and so I'm going to post that on my TikTok soon, but it's a lot to be like waking up at five before suhoor, eating suhoor, rushing out of the house, trying not to be late, student teaching all day long, and then afterwards, I come home exhausted, and then I either fall asleep or I waste time, which I did today so freaking much, and yesterday. Like, I have a huge problem with wasting time, and I don't, I think it's because recently free time has been so inaccessible for me like I've just been very busy with things and so whenever I get free time I don't know how to handle it or manage it like I will literally sit in bed for like four hours if I have it because I'm like free time like I need to use it up like I need to like do nothing you know and it's crazy because I've been so up and down the last 10 days with like productivity and then also like feeling like I'm doing good in my religion and my school and all that stuff. For example, today, like I woke up 
no, no, let's go to yesterday. So for example, yesterday, I wanted to record a podcast, but I ended up knocking out for like four hours, which I don't blame myself. Like I needed it. It's called like sleep debt or whatever. Apparently it's when like your body needs the more needs sleep more than you even know. And so like you just end up sleeping a lot longer than you were supposed to. Um, And then I felt bad about it. And then I go to school the next day, my work, like my student teaching, and I forgot my AirPods at home and I was going to edit the podcast that I was talking to you guys about, like my little project that I was doing. And I forgot my AirPods, but instead I read 10 pages of Quran at work and I've been really, really behind on Quran and just not feeling very connected to it in the first 10 days. And so I made a more achievable goal that I'll talk about later. And I felt really accomplished after that. And then I came home and I wasted time for like four hours because I came home early. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, so much free time. What am I going to do? Waste time. So that's definitely something I'm working on. Um, not even this Ramadan, but just in general, like not wasting my time, giving myself like an hour to do nothing because I genuinely enjoy doing nothing and like laying down in bed. But there's so many other things I want to do and I can't get myself to do them because I choose to waste time. And so, like I said, going to work on that. But yeah, in terms of my schedule, I feel like I'm getting the hang of it kind of like I'm waking up for suhoor. I'm preparing my clothes the day before. Um, I'm feeling extra hungry throughout the day, y'all. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm feeling hungry. And then there's, like, those thoughts in my head that are like, wait, the hunger is good. Technically, you're in a calorie deficit. You're going to lose weight or whatever, which is the unhealthy food relationship I have, um, which is not true. I'm not even in a calorie deficit if I'm stuffing my face at suhoor and iftar and then not working out all day. But regardless, it is tough to fast, but it's making me more like calm. I feel like it I feel like fasting eases your anxiety because like I'm not constantly having like a sugar rush. I'm just like I'm just calm. Like people are people are asking me like are you good and I'm like I'm literally just I'm just here. Like I'm just hungry. I'm here. I'm just tired. Like you know, um but I don't want to feed into the like Ramadan zombie vibe where I'm just gonna go everywhere and just be exhausted all the time you don't really need food that badly so I'm gonna stop acting like a zombie and just do what I normally do just at lower energy levels so yeah I covered schedule I covered masjid personally how do I feel about Ramadan I feel I don't know like I really just pressed record on this podcast and just said let's see what happens but so all of these like thoughts that I'm having are very raw and new which is how I want this podcast to go so I guess it's fine but I don't know like I'm very up and down like some days I'll be like you're doing nothing for your dean and this is just every day and then other days I'm like period you prayed all the tarawih like I feel great you know and alhamdulillah I have been on top of my tarawih but there's other areas of improvement that I really want to hit on because I have a pattern of hitting kind of my goals at the end like at the last 10 days and I don't want to wait till then you know what I mean like I don't want to wait till the last 10 days to really get things moving um but I am being forgiving to myself I think or at least just going easy on myself because of this new schedule that I have of working all the time I'm not even working like half of y'all be working but so I promise I'm not trying to complain I'm just saying it is a lot busier than my old schedule used to be so I am going easy on myself in terms of putting like smaller achievable goals and pushing away the negative self-talk of like you're not doing enough kind of vibe um, as long as I know that I'm trying but yeah so like I said we're in the gut of Ramadan like the first 10 days like what are you doing now you know you had the days to adjust you had like the little buffer time what are you doing now are you still not doing anything because that might be a you problem you know what I mean like that's what I'm kind of telling myself like I gave myself that that time to like get used to Ramadan again so now is like when I'm actually starting to push myself more and like hold myself accountable like okay you weren't that great in Quran the first few days like you didn't personally read by yourself and all that stuff but what are you going to do now you know um so that's a good thing to keep in our minds that the last 10 days is not the only days we should be like going above and beyond you know what I mean I kind of want to reflect on the goals that I made in the last episode because like I made those goals in full excitement and 
you know, like I wanted to get those done. So I want to see how I've improved in those goals. So I kind of wrote them down and I'm going to go like one by one to the five goals that I said. I think I did six um, and just see where I'm at. And if you guys had also shared these goals and I want to see where you guys are at too, you know. So my first one was being present, like being present in Salat, being present in the masjid, like being less distracted. <sighs> I'm not going to lie. I was not great on this one. I don't feel as present in my Salat as I want to be. In Tarawih, though, I'm like on cloud nine. Like I'm holding my Quran. I'm reading the translation, which I heard there was a fatwa that said that you can read the translation in English as long as you're not moving your lips. So for those of you that have trouble focusing in salat because you don't understand what the sheikh is saying then use that quran and read the translation along with the sheikh that has helped me so much and i'm honestly becoming more and more amazed by the quran as the month is going on um being present at the masjid i feel like i'm present being present in the fact that it's ramadan and i'm fasting for a reason i'm praying for a reason and all that stuff i do feel like actually i've made significant progress with that um I don't think I was as present with my family as I want to be. And so today I'm taking like a mama day where I'm eating iftar with her and going to Tarawih because recently we've all been just going to different places. So I want to make sure that's important in my life as well. Okay, goal number two was to not backbite or like engage in talking about other people and stuff like that. Ugh, this one's hard because like I'm not backbiting out of like malice. Like I can't believe she did that. Why she's such like a B word. Like I'm not doing that, but like, I've had so many situations recently where like I don't trust my own judgment or I want to like fully divulge is that the word I don't know whatever has happened or whatever is happening and if I don't trust my own judgment then I confide in someone who I do trust and so uh, I feel like I can spend more time talking about things that matter but me as someone who loves to like I don't know like I love to understand situations and, and it helps me by hearing how other people understand the situations as well and so although I'm not backbiting I want to make sure that I'm spending more time talking about valuable things and not and not things that could just be left unsaid you know anyways next um not it sounds like I'm not doing any of my goals for real but I am I promise they're just little goals um, not watching pointless stuff or haram things or music, listening to music and all that. Alhamdulillah, I have not listened to any music this Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. However, there was a few nasheeds that had instruments in it, so I'm trying to stay away from those. But I've been bopping to these nasheeds for real. I was about to make y'all a playlist because I'm just like, I'm I'm going all the way back to Native Dean, to Sami Yusuf. Like, I'm going back. And I don't ha I don't feel the struggle of like, oh, I really want to listen to music, except I did like two times in the month. But I just I don't know, like nasheeds are so freaking good to me. And I've started my mornings with morning athkar, which is a habit that I've created before Ramadan, which is so important. I wish I did more of that. Like the habit of listening to morning athkar on YouTube every single day on my way to work, like I carried that habit to Ramadan now. And like, you know how like whenever your mind wanders, you just start like singing something random or saying whatever TikTok tr sound is like in your mind. I'd be saying the morning athkar like just randomly in my head. And so I just like, it's so crazy how when you cut out music, like you really, you really start to actually be thinking about things that matter like athkar and Quran and stuff like that. Because we all like to say that, oh, like music doesn't take away from my deen or it doesn't take away from my quran but it really does honestly it takes over the mind it's like subliminal um so yeah alhamdulillah i haven't listened to music how and i've stayed away from netflix i had two days where like i didn't stay away from netflix but i'm kind of proud of myself in the fact that i have oh no i'm not proud i take it back i've been on tiktok way too much tiktok and reels and i never thought i'd be a reels girl um and i hope this is not sounding like i'm like proud of my sins or proud of like you know like it's all good like don't worry about sinning like that's not the vibe I'm trying to get off but I am trying to give off the vibe like it's okay to have goals and not achieve them right away you know like I want to I want to normalize struggle because even though that's like okay girl we already know like struggle is normalized it's really not because every podcast we listen to every lecture we listen to like they never obviously talk about their own faults which is 
Islamically correct, like you shouldn't be exposing your own sins. But I do feel like at times it's important to show people that perfection is just not attainable, even though we love to see like TikTok videos of like the perfect room or the perfect day in the life or the perfect schedule or the perfect job, like all that. So we're literally like shoved perfect down our throat. And then when we don't achieve perfectionism or we don't achieve perfect, and then we're like, all right, I suck and I'm going to stop trying. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to avoid the mindset for myself and for you guys of just giving up when it doesn't seem like picture perfect. Okay, my next goal was learning my book, like learning the Quran and what I'm reading and not just like, you know, pointlessly listening or whatever. And uh, although at the beginning I wasn't doing that on my own time at Tarawir, I was fully like trying to understand the book and I loved it. Yesterday, me and my friend Fatima, after every two rakahs, we sat down and talked about what we just read in the Quran, in Tarawih. And we were like, oh my gosh, like that's so crazy. Like there was literally a miracle in there or that's crazy how it was addressed in that ayah. And it was, ugh, I love friendships like that. I love combos like that. So that was like the highlight of my day yesterday. Um, and I feel like I have been learning my book. However, like I said, I want to do it on my own time because I'm kind of struggling with like, practicing on my own like I'm good at tarawih when there's people I'm good at real Quran when there's people I'm good at taking my time with salat when there's people but that's kind of hypocritical because what are you doing when you're alone you know and I'm not saying I haven't done any of those things alone but I can tell there's like a little bit of a shift when I'm with people and yes they give me motivation so it's not like a bad thing but I want to make sure they're kind of equal you know because my true iman lies with what I do by myself behind closed doors without the eyes of others you know um, and then my last goal, or maybe I'm missing one, but this is the last one that I have written down, is to dress as modest as I can in Ramadan and then have that translated kind of after Ramadan. I, I've been rocking with this, honestly. Like, I literally broke my bank account buying abayas, so I'm so excited for those to come in and so excited to see how I'm going to live with negative in my bank account. But, 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 but. I'm so excited for these abayas to come in because I've been shuffling the same three for the past like two weeks. But I've been I've been going to school in abaya, which props to my friends who made abaya Thursday on campus because I absolutely am so motivated by them for creating that because it makes me feel comfortable to wear abaya. And then obviously to the mesh that I wear abaya. And then recently, this week, literally this week, I was like, why don't I just wear abaya to work? Like, they're literally kids. Like, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? And then also, I know how to style abaya as well to where it's like still professional, which I feel like abaya is professional, but you know what I mean? I'm just trying to make it look mm, business casual, kind of. Um, And I felt, <laughs> girl, I never felt prettier. Like, I actually felt like a vibe with my little cloak like flowing in the wind. And yes, I did get there. And the kid said, why are you what did she say? I don't know. She said, why are you fully clothed or something? She was like, why are you have to wear like all that long stuff or something like that? And I literally looked at her. I said, why are you wearing that? And she said, uh, because I like it. And I said, same. I like it too. Thanks, girl. That's actually how I explain hijab to little kids. Because as an employee at the school, I am not allowed to talk about religion. I'm pretty sure like in school settings, you're not allowed to talk about religion. And so I'm not sure the rules of talking about my hijab. And so when I'm asked, I'm just like, oh, I like wearing it. And then she's like, and then I'm like, do you, why are you wearing that shirt? And then they're like, because I like it. And I'm like, period. Um, I did tell a kid those because of my religion, but I'm with second grade. So I feel like they're old enough to like not ask too many questions. But yeah, I have honestly noticed a few stares at school, like on at work I've noticed like a few stares and it's a little bit uncomfortable like not a few stares honestly I feel like they treated me a little bit differently like they looked at what I was wearing they're like why is she wearing that to school like why can't she dress normally well babe my normal is not your normal I realized I literally spent this entire year or semester dressing like you guys to be accepted but this is how I dress so deal with it um but I felt great besides that honestly like I felt great um to be vulnerable with you guys, the only time I don't feel great with Abaya is when I go to campus, like when I go to my actual school. Um, 
And I feel great when I'm around my Muslim friends, but I do have classes with people that are not Muslim and I'm like chilling with my habaya friends, just walking around, feeling great, feeling confident. And then I walk into this class full of people or not a single one of them are Muslim. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just wearing a full habaya, like, you know, just repping my religion right here, right now. And yes, they do look at me weird. But honestly, I have style and I have confidence and I'm just going to roll with it because it really puts me in like a kind of elementary or middle school, high school mindset when I walk into that room because I'm just like, I feel watched or I feel like different from everyone else, but it's really good rejection therapy for me. Um, And it's a good reminder of what, of like the sincerity of what I'm doing. Like you can, you know that my worship through modesty is sincere because I'm wearing it in uncomfort, you know? Like I am uncomfortable wearing it in the setting, but I'm still doing it. Um, there was a time where I actually changed out of my abaya because I was uncomfortable and I was basically at a food bank and I was volunteering <clears throat> for one of my classes and I walked in there wearing abaya because it was Ramadan and I just felt, ugh, I felt like stared at, like it felt so wrong, honestly, like it didn't. And then I convinced myself that I needed to change into a zip up hoodie that I had in the back of the car because it would be easier to volunteer but if I'm really reflecting on it I think I did like the fact that I would look like everyone else as well so that was a moment of weakness for me but like I said we're working with what we got we're trying our best and we're actually putting in sincere effort in our worship and that's really what matters so yes I had a little bump in the road but alhamdulillah this week going to work in Abaya felt really good. And so I'm happy with that progress. Also, I've been doing this thing. Um, I downloaded. Th- OK, also, I downloaded this app. I think it's called five minute journal or like five minute gratitude journal. Let me look at it actually right now. Every day I literally write down and I thought it was cringy at first. Like, hear me out. Three things I'm grateful for three affirmations which I find so cringy I'm not gonna lie like I I'm so for affirmations but I can't get myself to do it like I can't tell myself I'm proud of myself it just doesn't make sense in my head okay I have it open so it's basically three things you're grateful for three things you'll do to make today great and then three daily affirmations and then at the end of the day you do highlights of your day and then how I could have made today even better and I absolutely love this because I am such a journal girl, but I can't get myself to journal. I will do one journal entry and then I'll close the journal and then I'll find an even cuter journal at Target and I will cop it because I am a journal girl. And then again, the cycle continues and I will not journal. So this being on my iPad or it could literally be on your phone is really helpful. And God, does it boost my mood? Like, you know, I'm already hangry. I'm already tired, exhausted. And then in the morning, I'm literally writing down three good things. And I'm like, this is so great. My life is so great. So I'll share my things for today that I did this morning. Um, I did three things I'm grateful for. One is having money to buy what I need and what I want. Alhamdulillah. Number two, being protected from harm. Like we really don't deep the fact that we're on the road every single day and could get in a car accident and don't. Or every day we're waking up healthy and then other people are literally afflicted with disease and we're just fine or like today I didn't lose anybody like nobody died that I care about today and alhamdulillah for that I still have people around me that I love so like I don't know that that's just like today I was like being protected from harm for real and I had a friend who got in a car accident and so she her sharing that with me and other people honestly really set me back um on track to like great being grateful about my life and my and what I'm protected from so may Allah protect her and ease her pain I mean and then third was my family because um alhamdulillah even though my family and I are kind of like living in different places actually I'm living with my family but I have siblings living all over the place so even though they're not around I am grateful for them and I'm grateful to come home to my family and I'm grateful to say salam to my mom and dad every morning these are just three things that i'm grateful for that morning and they're different every day i think what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to do three things you're grateful for that day 
because then it really I feel like whenever we do I, heard, I just heard a professor talk about this the other day in a in a workshop that I was at and she was saying that we always try to do the gratefulness journal about like my life instead of like day to day anyways those little tiny happy moments in your life are what actually keeps you happy not the big things not the like huge like oh I'm going on this trip or I passed all my classes like those are good things but like little things in the day that make you happy um okay so and the next thing was what will I do to make today great I said I will spend time with my mom which I am gonna do later today uh number two I will try to record a podcast which I'm doing right now so thankfully I can check that off um and then three I will create a Quran goal so today I created a Quran goal when I was at work and I I kind of just like okay guys let me take you through my Quran dilemma. I want to read the entire Quran, correct? But I spent the entire first 10 days not reading the entire Quran. So now I'm so behind. And I know that if I try and start from the beginning of the Quran right now, I will absolutely fall off and just kind of like, I know that if I set that goal to finish the entire Quran, I don't know, I feel like I won't be able to stay motivated throughout because I will be behind forever. And so what I did today since I've been praying tarawih every night, alhamdulillah, is that I kind of left, I kind of put a mark where the sheikh ended. And then today I read a juz past what he had finished on. And so today when I go to the masjid, I think I'm going to be able to reread that with him, whoever the sheikh is. And so I was really proud, guys. Like I pre, I, I tell you guys all the time to do these little achievable goals, but I'm not going to lie. I don't be doing them. <laughs> and so creating this short achievable goal was so satisfying when I finished it guys I read 10 pages at work 10 pages at work like that might not be a lot to y'all but it was a lot to me and I am proud of myself for it and I I'm like ready for the next goal you know what I mean so alhamdulillah I created that goal and now I can create another one it could be bigger it could be smaller depending on my day but I'm rooting for like improvement and so I'm obviously gonna make it a little bit bigger hopefully or just the same goal and just keep achieving it over and over again because consistency over perfection. Yeah. Anyway, so um, the daily affirmations are cringy. I'm caring. I'm a good friend and I can achieve my goals. I don't know. Like this part, I really can't. I can't get myself to do. I guess it's just like I kind of focused on things that I. That I want to remind myself of, I guess, because I do get in my own head a lot. And so I said, I am caring. I am a good friend and I can achieve my goals not saying that I thought I wasn't a good friend or I wasn't caring or I couldn't achieve my goals but because those negative self-talks do come in I want to like block them off with these affirmations and I don't like looking at the gratitude journal and like not filling out one part so I filled it up but yeah um I love this gratitude journal and I really recommend you guys do it I believe it's called um five minute journal self-care um and it's free and I, it has 4.8 reviews, so go get it right now because gratitude in Islam is such a big thing. And this is for my journal girls who never actually journal. Anyways, moving on. So, so I love the card game, We Are Not Really Strangers, because it literally reinforces what I always say, which is that small talk is boring, it's annoying, let's get into the deep stuff. And every time I go out with friends or whatever, or like meet new people... I immediately suggest that we play hot seat, which is basically a game where, and it's a game, you don't need anything. You don't need cards. You don't need like a, like a board game. Like it's literally just, you set a timer for two minutes or one minute and you put it in front of you and everyone in the group gets to ask you whatever you want, whatever they want for a minute straight. And it's literally like, it's not even like easy questions. Like what's your favorite color? It's like, what are you most insecure about? Or like, what are you struggling with the most right now? And yes, obviously you don't have to answer if you're uncomfortable with it. And if they ask you something like, are you talking to someone? What's his name? Like you don't have to answer, but it is so freaking good for connecting with the people you're with. Like, and I feel like it encourages vulnerability, which I literally love. And not all people love vulnerability, so this game is not for everyone. But the people that I'm around, I feel like it's just fun getting into it, obviously. And your friends are not going to ask you uncomfortable questions unless they are not really your friends. Um, but vulnerability is uncomfortable, so 
getting into that, I feel like it's just, ah, I love that game. I will literally die by that game. But um, where was I going? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I love the game. We are not really strangers because it gets in, it gets into that. But I never had it. Like I never bought it. Whatever. Because I'm pretty sure you're supposed to do it like as a couple. Um, and so I looked it up, and apparently the entire game is on Quizlet. The entire game is on Quizlet. Of course, Quizlet, the Holy Grail, has this game, and I bet they have more games. So I thought, what better way to connect with you guys on a deeper level than me playing? We are not really strangers, and you guys answering in your head. And obviously, I would love to hear you guys' answers. So if you were to DM me or if you were to add it into my question sticker after this podcast, I would absolutely love that. Um, and I be- and I actually think I will share that with um, my following if you guys would be comfortable with that. Obviously, it's not going to show your names. So I chose three questions from level two of We Are Not Really Strangers because level two is about connection. And I want to create that connection with me being a Muslim sister and you guys being Muslim sisters And like I said, for those who don't have that sisterly connection with anyone in their life, I want that to be us. So let's start with the first question. What would you tell your younger self? Like what advice would you give to your younger self? Um, I would put that girl through a workshop. Like I would I would give her an eight week course that she mandatory had to take just to prevent her from so many things that happened but everything happens for a reason and I wouldn't be where I am today without, you know, without me being who I was. But I think one thing I would tell my younger self is, let me think about this one for a sec, actually, because there's so many things I would tell her. I would tell her not to be a people pleaser. I would tell her to take care of her family. I would tell her to stop expecting perfectionism. I would tell her to stop living by other people's Actually, yeah, I'm going to use that one. I would tell my younger self to stop living for other people, to stop living based on what they wanted and what they reacted positively to. And don't get rid of parts of yourself just because people don't have a positive reaction to it. So, for example, just not not dimming my light, not making myself smaller, not not doubting myself and doubting my abilities as a friend or as a daughter or anything just because of how people treat you or just because of how they perceive you don't live based on their perception of you live based on who you want to be tomorrow Ugh, motivational right dang i should go on a ted talk for real um so yeah i don't know if that was deep but that's what I would tell her. I would just tell her to stop living for other people because I still have sprinkles of that in my life today. And it's really, really hard to get rid of because you really do upset so many people while you do it. That like currently upsetting people that I love, that I care about just because I'm giving up that part of myself that feeds into these high expectations of myself as a friend or as a person and I'm just kind of letting that go silently, like literally letting it die. Um, And it's kind of hard for people to accept, but I am doing it for myself. And I'm proud of where I'm going or the person that I'm building. Okay, number two, what would I don't even remember these questions, guys. I planned this podcast at work yesterday when I was supposed to record it. So it's kind of good that I don't remember them because I didn't even try to answer them beforehand this is all raw as you can tell by my chaotic thoughts everywhere what would your younger self not believe about yourself today Ooh, um a lot of things honestly I guess first of all she wouldn't believe that I'm married because that really came out of nowhere okay she would not believe that I was capable to give up things that I've given up For example, she wouldn't believe that I was capable of giving up other people's opinions or other people's pleasure, other people's satisfaction. Like she would not believe that. She would think that it's just not possible to not please people and to be okay with people not liking you or even disliking you, hating you even. Like just being okay with that, accepting that some people just don't want you in their life or some people are just not wanting the best for you and that's okay I think she would really 
have trouble believing that, honestly, because of how deep rooted my people pleasing was. Um, and then also she wouldn't believe that I was capable of giving up certain things for the dean. For example, like how I used to dress or or just recently I've given up makeup, which I want to make like a whole different topic of like discipline and giving things up for the sake of a love, but I've given up makeup um, for Islamic reasons. And obviously I wear it here and there um, within the, not within the bounds of Islam, but like within my own restrictions and limits of where I am in my goal. And as someone who like values beauty a lot or like, I know I shouldn't, but like, obviously I am a girl in this, I'm just a teenage girl. Um, this, what is it? 21st century. I don't even know. Um, giving up like that standard of beauty was like kind of really hard and I'm still dealing with it. And it's just like, I never thought that I would do it. And so I think she'd be proud. I think she would be surprised and maybe, maybe in denial, but I think she would be proud. And so I'll take that as a little milestone. Whew. Um, okay. Number three, what are you still trying to prove to yourself? Girl, what am I not trying to prove to myself? Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm acting like somebody's asking me this. I'm literally talking to myself and recording it and you guys are listening. That's really how this podcast is going. Um, what are you still trying to prove to yourself? I... You guys tell me if you'd rather me pre-prepare these answers, you know, instead of like going through my thought process with me, because I could do that or I could just be raw and answer them on here. But it takes me a little bit longer to get to my conclusion. I think I'm still trying to prove to myself that I am capable because I feel like I have had this constant feeling of being incapable, incapable of achieving goals, incapable of discipline, incapable of hard work, incapable of pleasing everybody, literally incapable of being who I want to be. And like, I have like a clear vision of who I want to be. And I always have clear things that I want to do, but I always feel incapable of doing them. That's like my first initial thought, like, give me a project and I'll be like, oh, I can't do it. And then I have to mentally and actively change that mindset. Like, no, maybe you can. Let's try and see it. Like, I'm literally, he, I'm my own therapist for real. Like, this is a, this is a tough job. Um, but yeah, I think I'm still, it definitely takes some effort for me to believe that I'm capable in something. And like I said, my first thought is always you can't do it. And that's obviously rooted in childhood or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think I've definitely gotten better at it. I do feel like I'm capable. Like, I never thought I was capable of making a podcast, and here I am. I never thought I was capable of praying all my prayers and consistently, and here I am. So it's honestly like I prove myself wrong daily, yet that thought is still so rooted in me. But I'm still growing, and I'm still, I think I'm proving to myself every day that I am capable. So maybe I'm not trying to prove that to myself. Maybe I have already proved it. Whew. Dang. This will be so fun to play with someone. So when I have guests again, so when I have guests, I'm going to try to have us answer these questions. I don't know how comfortable they would be with the vulnerability level of it, but um, I just chose kind of like, I don't know if these were considered icebreaker, but they weren't as deep as I expected. But they are level two connection questions. And if you guys enjoyed this part of the podcast, I would love to add it to future podcasts. Um, your feedback is really important to me because I actually know what you enjoy and what you don't. So, so many people answered the question stickers at the end of my Spotify podcast. And I really enjoy that because I look through them and I even publish some of y'all's responses because it's I just I want everyone to see your reaction to the podcast. And so that way maybe someone else is like, oh, I want to feel like that. I want to feel inspired or I want to feel connected. And so they start listening to it as well. Um, I honestly like refreshed my DMs daily expecting like a angry text from any of you to be like, where are you at? Like, get it wherever you're at. No, I'm kidding. Um, 
just like an angry text of like, hello, when are you going to post? When are you going to post? But you guys have been patient with me. And so I am planning to edit this tonight or tomorrow as fast as I can. Get it out to you guys. Continue editing my other project that I'm working on and maybe doing another podcast in between. This is me again setting huge goals, but <laughs> at least they're smaller and more attainable. Um, that way I can actually get things done. Okay, so before I finish this podcast, I really want to get into this DM that I got from a girl, um, and she was asking me if I could talk about this, and so I wrote down kind of what her text was talking about, and I'll kind of get into it. I didn't fully um, process the question, but I definitely like gave it some thought, and I want to give more thought through this podcast. She said, I'd love to hear about how you maintain your identity outside of being a Muslim woman and how you manage having a fun personality while being religious. I know it's not the case, but it sometimes seems like you have to give up on a lot of parts of yourself to be religious, humor being one of them. Would love to hear your opinion on this. Sometimes it feels like you can't be funny and religious, you can't have certain friends and be religious, you can't have fun and be religious at the same time. That's what I struggle with the most with religion. It just feels like I have to give up on so much of who I am fundamentally to be religious and pious. I know that there are lots of parts of me that I should give up as a sacrifice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a good person, not just a good Muslim, but it feels like I would become a shell of who I was before. Not sure if that makes any sense, and if it doesn't resonate with you, I understand. Okay, so first, initially when I read this, um... I obviously thought this was a great topic to talk about on the podcast, um, a great little advice segment. Um, and I did resonate with it, but the only part I didn't resonate with was the identity outside of being a Muslim woman. So I don't necessarily separate my Muslim identity with the quote unquote other parts of me. I feel like you can be all those things that you mentioned simultaneously. So I think when it I think the problem is when we try to separate Muslim from ourselves because Islam is not, you know, just a, like, what do you believe in kind of thing. It's like literally a way of life. You believe in something, you act on it, you live by it, you know? So like, I don't really separate what I live by from myself. And I feel like nobody does, but I can understand how sometimes it's we separate the two because they don't really go together. And I'll explain that in a second. But for example, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, I'm a teacher, I'm a student. Like I'm all of those things on top of being a Muslim woman. Like it's not separate from that. Muslim woman just means that I am believing in Islam and I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers. And that doesn't change when I am funny or when I have a fun personality, you know, like it all goes with it. Um, but before all of those things, before all the qualities that you are as a person comes your belief, because that is more important than anything, you know, like, because your whole purpose on this earth is to please Allah SWT and work towards your akhirah, your afterlife, which is inshallah, Jannah for all of us. I mean, so what I also understand with what you're saying is that it's hard to have a fun personality and be a Muslim woman. Now, I don't want to like put words into your mouth, so I don't want to like explain what you meant by that, but I can kind of resonate it with my life. So obviously, I don't actually uh, I don't I don't want to say like I don't resonate, but like I am funny and I have a fun personality and I'm a Muslim woman. Like I don't I don't see how you can't be those things and a Muslim woman unless those things don't align with your beliefs. For example, making jokes but those jokes involve backbiting or making or having a fun personality, but that involves like cursing all the time or, you know what I mean? Like I understand how those things don't align with that Muslim woman identity, but technically those things are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented from you, like the things that are made haram are good for you. And so, yes, when it seems like you're giving up a lot of those things for the sake of Allah, in the moment it feels uncomfortable but afterwards, you realize, like later on, after giving up something for the sake of Allah, you realize that it was never good for you in the first place. So I don't think you need to give up being funny unless your jokes are 
putting other people down or backbiting. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to not be funny. Like, the Prophet Sallallahu himself was funny. You know, like, there's this, just the idea that, like, when you're religious, when you're pious, like, you are literally locked in a room in sajda, reading Quran, never leaving. Like, that's really not it. Everything you do in your life can be an act of ibadah, an act of worship, with the intention that you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going to school, act of worship. If you're going to school for the sake of Allah, it's literally just your intention. Sleeping is an act of worship because you're resting your body to go the next day and be a good daughter, be a good mom, be a good student. It's an act of ibadah. Like it's not just praying, it's not just reading Quran, it's not just doing dhikr. All of those things are insanely important because it keeps you grounded in your deen. But everything else, every part of you is also Muslim. The funny parts of you, you putting a smile on other people's faces and having good company with with your people, that is an act of worship if you have the intention that you're doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you're saying like you can't be funny and religious, I disagree. When you, you can't have certain friends and be religious, you can't have fun and be religious at the same time. So what I understand in that is that the friends that you have are not good for you. But it's uncomfortable to give them up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I understand that because I've had friends in the past that weren't bringing me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And although I didn't necessarily like cut them off or anything, I definitely like took my mental step back because I knew that they weren't helping me or they were taking me the opposite direction. And I made an intentional choice to meet people who were going to bring me towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who were going to mention his name in our gatherings and things like that. So certain friends... Like you have to, honestly, I think it really goes back to understanding that the people you're around will definitely either drag you down or pull you up. There's a saying just like perfume. When you are around someone who smells like good perfume, you are going to end up smelling like good perfume. When you're around someone who smells bad, you are going to end up smelling bad. And so it's just a reflection of like how people and friends, especially friends, because it's a closer connection, rub off on you. And so those certain friends that you can't be with when you're religious i'm assuming you're talking about ones that drag you down and yes those friends might be funny and they might be fun and but if they're dragging you down nothing is worth risking your akhira for i'm telling you nothing this i literally just read this in the quran yesterday during tarawih Ugh, i wish i could find it right now but it was there was an ayah talking about how those people in this life that are like not religious or they're not like believing and they seem to be having like a good life like they're not getting tested they're doing great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about how they're they're gonna enjoy this life but like just wait just wait for the next life because then they will actually see their fate you know what I mean Ugh, this sounds like I'm telling you that your friends are like going to hell and you're going to Jannah I'm not saying that but I am saying Pick your friends wisely. And if you feel like you have to give up those friends to be religious, I am telling you that is the right choice. Although it is uncomfortable, although it is not ideal, if your friends are keeping you from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not worth it. And so I'm not saying like cut them off completely because you never know when they could like turn around and also take that step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or how you can be an inspiration for them. But I am saying that take that mental note that your iman is much much more important than those certain friendships that you don't want to let go of so i feel like i'm a prime example of this and i'm not saying like yes this is the most fun funny fun personality person ever and look she's still religious so it's fine but um i'm not gonna lie like i have been getting closer to my dean and i didn't get any less funny and i didn't get any less fun like i still know how to have a good time and i still love making people laugh and just being in those hilarious situations and combos while still not jeopardizing my dean obviously i'm not 100 percent perfect at it and i'm not trying to say that at all but it's not impossible you know what i'm saying like it's not like i said it's not someone who goes to the masjid fajr the hurrahasan maghrib and isha reads quran all day like that is not the like sole definition of good muslim like you can be a good muslim and also be fun and funny and be yourself as long as yourself is not jeopardizing your akhirah and so that's my advice on that 
I hope that made sense. It was kind of all over the place. But um, if you want any clarification, please continue DMing me because I will explain that to you. Um, and hopefully when I listen back to this, it doesn't sound absolutely insane. But yeah, um, it is now one hour exactly almost before Maghrib time. So I'm going to go make myself some steak and mashed potatoes because that is my comfort meal. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm going to eat iftar with my mom. I'm going to pray tarawih and then I'm going to come home and wake up super early the next day. But spend the whole day editing because I am really excited to get this out to you guys. And I really hope you guys' Ramadan is going well. I'm really excited and I cannot believe that people are already talking about Haid and it being over. Like, I never want to hear that again. <laughs> um, but I hope this episode kind of reminds you that smaller achievable goals are much more satisfying and attainable than those big goals. And please don't lose hope if you haven't spent the first 10 days doing anything or not enough than what you thought you were going to do. Um, I would love to hear what you guys thought about this episode and what you guys think about Ramadan in general so far. So please hit my line uh reply to these question stickers please like i'm i'm actually begging you guys i'll dm you guys each personally um but yes like i said i hope you guys enjoyed the episode and i will see you next week